Welcome. This is a tutorial on how to model an office interior in Cinema 4D. Um, the image shown here is um, the result of a model I did, I think, around about two years ago. And I did this pretty much in a rush based on a grid that was lying on the floor. You can see it down here. It consists of a bunch of squares and all I did was extruding up this grid to the ceiling because up there you can see the same squares all over again and after extruding it I cut it some loops along the walls to get windows and what makes the technique I want to show you so fast is that I reuse polygons for more details. For example, the lamps up here or the ventilation system just consists of these squares again that are just cut up. And um, the pillars here consists of the squares on the floor. So that makes a really nice model in the end uh, with good proportions. Uh, architects do that pretty much the same. And you can... Um, I used the pin, like I don't know how to call it, but like the, the pin board here um, out of the polygon from the wall and the pieces of paper even come from the surface of the pin board. And so I would like to show you my workflow. For that we just go to 3D view and the first thing I don't use uh, the cube object so much when I start with a model but rather a polygon. So you can create a polygon here and I don't really like uh, this blue color. I think it's too dark, so I cannot see any details later on. So I go to Mode Project and change it back to gray. Apart from that, I think it's quite important to be able to see the topology of my model. So let's display um, Goro shading lines so I can see all the edges. If you want to have more information about how many points and edges your model has and how many of them you just selected, you can go to mode and then there should be view settings. You can also press Shift V on your keyboard and here you can just go to HUD and so you get displayed the total number of objects, the total points, edges and polygons and the same with selected point, edges and polygons. So these are the main things I always have checked And later on, when we convert our geometry, they will be displayed. For example, if I click on my polygon again and convert it, then I can switch to point modes and it shows all the points there are. And once I select another point, uh, one of those points, it says you have four points in total and one of them is just selected. So you might think, why do you need that information? It's kind of obvious. And well, it is in this case, but there will be situations in where you are, like depending on the view angle, where you cannot be so sure whether anything is selected or not. And then sometimes I can just quickly check, okay, one point is perfect or no, like I need two points. And this is a great help with more complex models. 
And another thing that's essential for modeling quickly is to um, have shortcuts. I created a tutorial on how to customize Cinema 4D a few months or maybe one or two years back. And if, if you want to be able to change quickly between points and edges, um, then you should think about using shortcuts. You can read here in, in the rectangle uh, shortcut 4, 5 and 6 is what I've chosen. Um, same for model is 7, for selecting is 9, for selecting rectangles is 0 and that's pretty much of what I use apart from uh, another shortcut. Let's just delete polygon and when I press 1 I automatically get um, a polygon, which is the base for most of my models. So now back to what's the advantage of using a polygon over a cube. It's simply that when I have a cube, I get maybe more polygons than I actually need, and even worse, the axis is in the center of the cube. So when I create a polygon, I can still make a cube out of this, but the axis is on, on the floor, is like on the bottom of the object. So this saves me some work. And um, you might think that's like uh, picking small advantages, but in fact, it's quite essential. If you look at it, when I choose a point, for example, then I can read here down in the coordinates its height, like it's 65 units compared to the axis, which is on, on the floor. And I can later on use this for working precisely, which is essential for us architects. So let's um, just have a look at it again. I can just create a polygon and I might cut it up. Real quick, I can um, subdivide it several times, so it's basically a grid. And I can subdivide it smoothly, so I can use it as a base for more organic things. and so on. We'll do this in, um, not in a hurry like now, but properly. But to me, this was and is the yeah quickest way of just creating geometry in no time. There will be alternatives, but this was for me just the quickest. All right. In this case, I will not use a polygon now, but a grid. Why do I do this? Um, because the polygon has one disadvantage. Um, I cannot divide it easily. Like uh, if it's non-square, I get problems. Like um, you can see here, I have Distortions I cannot get rid of easily. The alternative would be to just use UB for this kind of selection, then MF for doing like this, then you go in UI and 
using UI and MF again and make sure it's like square shaped but maybe I'm wrong so for me it's easier to just use a plane in this case and I want my office to be 5 meters in this direction 8 and then 5 in this direction and for testing I just use 80 and 50 units so this means any square has a shape of 10 centimeters in this case I could also look that up by converting it clicking on the polygon and just looking here it's 10 by 10 units this is obviously not what I wanted so I just go control Z or command Z to redo this and I will again use 8 by 5 meters and go 80 by 50 and now to make this those little squares five times bigger I just divide it by 5 and by 5 so this is supposed to be like the main grid for all I do to create the office So if we wanted to, we could keep this and call it original. And I would like to disable the original and use the other piece here. I convert it using C on my keyboard. And now I just select all the polygons we have. So the next thing I do is I duplicate this and call the geometry I had before to floor because it's pretty much gonna stay like that and the new file will be done will be created for the ceiling so it's maybe two meters 80 high or maybe a bit lower to 40 will do and now I have two kinds of pieces I have the ceiling here I have the walls and the floor is another object the floor is this guy and this is my ceiling so luckily after extruding the top part is still selected so I can make a distinction between the ceiling and the wall pieces by pressing UP and delete. What I got now is two objects. This one is the ceiling and this guy is the walls. And this is the floor and the only thing we disable now is the orange. Like the original grid in case I still need it but I don't think so so the floor can be kept like this if I want to disable the walls and the ceiling because they are in the way I can just stroke over both objects like not releasing the left mouse button but just yet now and do this again another stroke and they are disabled So the floor is pretty much gonna stay the way it is. If I wanted to get rid of all the unnecessary detail, I can just select all polygons using Command A and then I press UZ so it's just keeping the edges. And I always check using the point mode whether they are any points left over but the function I just used namely UZ um, deleted those points for me so this is okay let's disable the floor and activate the walls here you can see that there are points left over by extruding 
And the quickest way of getting rid of them is a function called optimize. You can get there by pressing UO and it's what this function does is we can look into the function if you press U shift O. What it does is it's checking whether there are double polygons, whether there are unused points floating around and it checks for points within that tolerance if they are lying on top of each other or at least very close to each other. But I already did UO without calling up this window so anything's fine now. And now let's check the ceiling and you can see there are no spare points and I already have the grid that's so valuable for what I have to, in my mind. But first of all let's have a look at the walls and my image again. I have the windows and they are not like down to the floor but there is some space in between and there even is some space for a heating system uh, in front of my windows. So what I will do is I will just select these polygons here and only cut them up because like the back wall for example is still intact. You can tell by the cuts here that I didn't keep that in mind before. So it's basically up to us what we do, but we can all, actually we can cut them all up, but the thing that's more important is the orientation of the polygons. You can tell by the blue color that they are pointing outwards, but our camera is inwards and so we should just switch the polygons using UR. So make sure all our objects are pointing in the right direction, so the ceiling should be pointing downwards, UR, and the floor is alright. So how to cut up the walls quickly? You just go to edge mode, press UB, click in there, and the next thing you use is MF. So cutting through these in a regular manner is just done by holding down your left mouse button and this is the opening for the windows later on. I could control it here with percent like uh, where they are placed exactly and I could even change the scale right here but this is too imprecise because I want to work with proper units. So I just keep it uh, the way it is, doesn't matter. And I grab the loop cuts I created here one by one, going to edge mode if I'm not in it anymore, clicking with UL, UL for loop selection on this bottom part here and I check the coordinates here. At the moment I'm in object mode but I can switch to world mode which will be the same because the axis of my object is on the floor but just to make sure I go to or I keep it at world now and the bottom uh, line I just selected is at 80. So if you wanted to just for a test we can put it up to 90 and you can use the other guy or select the other guy using UL and put it right maybe to 2 meters. If I wanted to lower this I could even say like 60 but this appears a bit low to me maybe 70. Let's have a look and yeah maybe 90 wasn't too bad or yeah. 85. So the next step is to you know what it might have been better to just cut up the walls 
in, in this region. So we can quickly go back to this state where nothing is cut and select the polygons here. And now we use UP again and delete right afterwards. So we have two parts of walls, like inner ones. I call them walls inner and walls outer. And the outer walls get the same procedure again. I ring select those edges, press MF, make two subdivisions in there, select the bottom one, and now I can show you something, a, a new thing rising up, like here it it's not selecting whole rings anymore, but it's creating like the rings in itself, which I don't want. So I just say stop at boundary edges. So now it just cuts from here to there. I can use 85 here, select the other guy and go to 200. Yeah. Maybe 190. And this 80. The next thing is I need, when I model, I should anticipate and I should think about what edges do I have here and what edges do I need. So maybe the windows look better if they are not in a 50 by 50 grid, but they have two, um, yet yeah, they occupy two fields. Like I would use pairs like those, 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 and those, or like those, 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 and those. And I should think about how much space I leave in between. And um, yeah, this should work. If I just um, delete either using my UZ trick again, like here, UZ, so I have like proper openings for my windows, or going back, I could delete the edges, like UL again, and say any other edge will be removed by using um, shift C and now I type dissolve that way I kind of made my grid a bit lighter and now I could just check whether I want those windows here or just those ones. And the trick is always the same. Once I selected those guys, I can make windows out of that. So let's prepare that by going to D for extrusion and making them go outwards by 20 units. And um, for my heating system, I change, choose the bottom guys here and I go UP again and in this case I do not delete but I use the double ones for moving them outwards and um, with Alt D you can um, 
display your axis and you can see here that the axis is still in the center of the object but my actual heating system is located here. So if I wanted to move um, the axis to the heating system I would need to press for example L and move it there holding down shift I can make sure it's 250 which looks just perfect and this stuff only works if you um, work with numbers so if you are um, always restricting yourself in a good ma manner in a good way to using like 10 units or 5 units all the time so that way all your model will be much cleaner for example um, I should press L again to leave the axis moving mode when I move this I can just hold down shift after I move the arrow a bit like I start moving it and then I go shift and if I wanted to have a proper like distance to the ball like say 50 units then I can just use that and it will be always clean but in this case it's supposed to be a tiny little gap maybe not even 10 centimeters but maybe like 48 so it's it's a tiny gap and the heating should be a little lower so we could either now scale it just freehand like um, pressing T for scaling and just doing that kind of thing as another advantage of having the axis at the right spot you can press shift here to make it 90% but again what's 90% of um, 85 units so um, you might want to know the height of this edge and if I cannot select it like this guy doesn't really work then I can use UM for just stroking over it in the top and now I can see its height is 72 units and maybe I want to put it at right at 80 or maybe 75 so um, I can use precise numbers same here I might want to leave a gap by 5 units and then I'm almost ready to extrude that stuff what I would like to do is um, to use fields again so I would like to um, kind of um, delete some edges so when I now go to dissolve let's have a look whether dissolve has a shortcut I might overlook it but if you don't know the shortcut or you don't have one just like me I think you can still use shift C and just type dissolve and press enter so this is kind of irregular I have like three big fields and a small one and those bits here but well it's just a demonstration so let's not overdo it and usually if I want to show that this kind of thing is split up I should make it visible because when I render this now all these edges are invisible if you just look at this it, it's just a straight line uh, straight um, like it looks like one polygon basically and if I want to split it up I 
have an option which is like selecting those edges going MS and that way I can open up little gaps and another essence to good looking models is to have good control over your edges like over your gaps if you always use the same value for this kind of stuff with similar objects and if you have a feeling for how far these gaps should be then your model will look a lot better so let's go back to polygon mode and now I can show you something really really great and this is that the big polygons are still selected and the gaps are not and this is only because I had the polygon selected before so let's go back this is what you really should keep in mind for speedy modeling if I have like the heating here I I mean I could do like these gaps here and go back to polygons like this but it used to be like that if I don't have any polygons selected and I just use edge mode I open that up and I go back to polygons okay that's new with cinema um, it kind of automatically selects the right thing for me okay so please forget this um, tip um, now uh, they solved this for us that tip doesn't uh, apply anymore so all we need to do is select the edges press MS create our tiny little gaps go to polygon mode and now we press UI for inverting our selection so all the little gaps are selected and delete them so now you press UI again and you have the big pieces again and then you can extrude them but be aware that you a use a proper value and there are backsides to be created so we just click create caps and that way we have backsides as well without those caps on the back it wouldn't be a closed model and if you zoom it to the gaps you can see it worked now we have actually like two separate objects at least in, in, in the physical uh, way in our hierarchy they are still one object but now they look like uh, they are separated and for nice architectural renderings you need well-defined gaps as I said by the way if like the ceiling is in the way you can click on them twice here or another trick just hold down alt before you click in those guys and you can change those uh, buttons one uh, like in one go what I always do after having created gaps is bevel those guys uh, like all the edges at least if I have like a, a primitive box shape I can just select all the edges and go to MS go real close and just make something tiny like 0.1 that might not be visible from far away so let's check well that's too tiny so let's go 0.2 and render them out again and those little highlights are very uh, valuable for our rendering later on we can also experiment with some subdivisions but yeah this looks even better but creates more geometry so let's 
do it like this. This is for our heating. And um, I'm not going to detail this any further because it's, it's not really in our scene. But what's more interesting is to work on with the windows. Maybe the heating is located a bit too low. So if I wanted to change this kind of thing, I could lift it up like the whole thing. A few centimeters, but yeah, we'll see that later on. Now for the outer wall, I select all the windows and with I I can make an like an extrusion inwards. If I uncheck preserve groups, I can do so for each window separately and always use straight numbers like 4 and what you should keep in mind before you work on is that this piece is still connected to um, the windows so if you want to have an easy life just go back and split this selected geometry up now like using UP and delete and now we have a remaining object which is called windows. Now I select all the polygons again, go inwards by say four units and yeah that's all I did. We can extrude them outwards but now we have to uncheck create caps and I always go in uh, I only go inwards like a few centimeters so you can just tell that these are windows um, maybe like four units but that's about it and then I press UP and delete again to have glass so let's go on with this game and copy paste using command C, command V and this kind of guy is um, giving a shadow um, it's kind of shadowing our windows um, and you would just go back to object mode this guy and move them outwards slightly so let's just move this inwards quickly and just move them outwards so they are kind of floating in the air now I put them outwards 20 centimeters but we can still move them later on and now you can see that it's possible to work on multiple polygons at once even they are separated like um, I just go to edge mode and run across all the long edges and now I use MF cut through there then I go UI MS to bevel them without any subdivisions pressing polygons inverting and deleting those polygons so this might be an element you would do on the outside like um, like this kind of thing going to all edges and beveling those guys but in this case I want something lighter so I go back until the state where I had the tiny bits deleted and now what I need is only the 
lower edges like this guy and so on. And how do I delete them? Uh, the easiest way is looking from the side like here and going to the rectangle selection, removing that gizmo with Alt D and make sure that I have only select visible elements disabled. So that way I should be able to get my edges. With F1 I go back to 3D perspective and now I can move the Alt D. I can move the lower parts so I actually have like um, something like a, yeah something that shades my window. I go to polygon mode and extrude this or I can be even better and go back to edge mode and only select the short pieces now viewing from top I can use my rectangle tool again and I have all of them selected and now I hit MF and I should use a really really low value now like 2 and now I select all the polygons and I only want the middle parts so maybe UK helps, no it doesn't UK was for shrinking my selection but then the next way to to only keep the middle polygons is to look from top again maybe um, using control tab to make this really big and now I try to select only the middle parts with my rectangular selection and there I go going back to F1 and control tab to um, to minimize that oh, I'm sorry for that control tab worked this time and what I want to do now is just pushing those polygons up. I can change the modeling axis of my uh, move tool for that by using axis and there should be selected. Oh, excuse me, this is okay but orientation is what I want to change, namely to normal and that way I can precisely move them up and down so now they are slightly bent so now let's select all the polygons again and extrude them with um, polygon mode and D for extruding I can just do this, make sure the caps are activated and now it really depends on the viewer's distance I think this is okay but if you really wanted to you could bevel some edges here but be aware if you now select all the edges and go MS for beveling then um, you're beveling those Part two. This is not what you want and to be honest I well you could work on with um, doing lots of loop selections here but 
let's keep the shades the way they are. So what is a quick way of um, doing like um, chords, like uh, holding those things? It's um, probably using or deactivating the shades for now and using the glass pieces again. Um, going UP, moving them 20 centimeters to front, going to edge mode, and you know what? When I um, want to save time, I sometimes don't select what I want, namely this, this, and this, but what I do instead is just selecting what I not don't want and then I invert it. So what I would like to do is going MF and now I want to use those edges for chords and I'm not quite finished yet I should use the scale function this time and um, maybe select those guys going MS and this is the width oh no let's do it even differently let's convert those selections without any beveling to splines which can be done with tools maybe no it's mesh and then there should be spline and the funny thing is that it has to do with splines but it's not listed among the splines and it is a command called edge to spline so what I get is a spline which looks like this you can see here that it has top and bottom points and now we can do a little experiment namely sweeping a tiny little profile a six-sided tiny profile will do along these splines so this is the path like chord path and this is the chord profile and now let's see whether this can be swept fantastic so if you think they are too straight then you can select all the points and subdivide them using us 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 maybe one more and then you want to kind of jitter them around just a tiny bit. You know those chords are never really straight, so go ML and use crumple. Hit apply to see better what we're doing. And I use crumple axial. So that way I can keep this almost straight but I can 
manipulate it in that direction slightly maybe like so let's have a look this is the effect I get and it's different on every chord this might be too extreme but um, we'll see later on in conjunction with the shades and now I can move the whole thing so um, I should make sure that the axis is where my objects are if I don't want to move it by hand I can also use the commands um, to position the axis to center of this object uh, this doesn't work because it's located probably here um, so moving that I can show you the trick later so let's uh, hit L again and move them outwards and now that way I can just make them run through there. Well, usually they should be placed outwards further but um, this is a step I should have thought of uh, a bit earlier. Of course you can correct that, I can show you like um, what you could do is choosing the paths uh, like this and then you have um, a size showing the distance so I could go like 20 have a look if that looks better and then I can go and say 20 for everything so for each two chords I do this so you see my modeling workflow is a bit of a um, combination of anticipating and things so I, I just plan stuff so the distance from here to there there you got me is more like um, like combining uh, or anticipating stuff and at the same time being hopefully able to correct some mistakes quickly okay this is how far we got don't forget to save your scene and um, like here and I always use glow shading lines so I can see whether anything is okay if you want to see your work better you could already start with um, changing some settings um, in terms of ambient occlusion or so to see the gaps better but I leave that for now and I call my sweeps chords and put them below my shades and I deactivate the vis visibility of both of those guys so for the windows I can choose edge loops maybe for without having selected anything and I should just select all these guys you can either do it excuse me the way I just did it clicking on them or I would like to show you another trick um, you can also um, select stuff that's easier to select oh no in this sorry uh, we just do it by hand in this case 
And you can also now use MS for beveling again, just to make this look a little nicer. Yeah, that will do. And um, what else do we need? I just, oh, I cannot say if it's a demo, so. Um, what else do we need? Oh yeah, I kind of pushed them together, leaving the chords. We can do that too. Um, let's just position our um, access center. Um, where we can actually um, use it and I would place it right on top pressing L before I do so moving it 180 to top or maybe just 10 more centimeters and now I remove L like the axis tool and I can move them up Probably not quite the way it is in reality, but uh, works for me. And what I wanted to do was disabling this wall, keeping this wall. And well, not so happy with that. Maybe we do it halfway then. Okay. What's our next thing we want to change? It's maybe the walls here. If you want to have something simple, then we could change these walls here. Um, for example, um, in order to extrude something by 30 units without creating caps we get a piece of floor we can maybe use later on for something and uh, same here so that's okay but you could also go back and create a cut right uh, maybe just one and go U L stop at boundary edges and place it on two meters so the same size like 190 and um, then I could do something like a little bay so to speak like those inwards there and later on we can use UP again, delete this and use maybe the same trick again put this to 190 excuse me, 180 and um, you may want to place a door in, in there. And with doors there's something special because if I want to extrude them first inwards then I need to create preserve groups again and um, the bad thing is that it creates me two polygons down here so I would have to have to re remove them 
and to select those two guys here, those edges, and set them to zero in world coordinates. But I don't want to have a door like this. I would like to dissolve this guy again using Shift-C, Shift-C and dissolve. And now I have a door I can use like extruding it outwards first. Three centimeters, then inwards. Yeah, six centimeters. And um, yeah, now it depends on how much you want to uh, go into detail. But um, we could at least place this on zero again. And. Um, it, it would be quite easy to detail this even further, like using D and I and D a thousand times. And you could again opt this, UP this, I mean, delete this, use the new piece and cut this with UB cut stuff in there, select all the polygons, go inwards, but this time without preserving the groups, and using D again. But that's probably not the style of you're going for in, um, in that kind of office. But I just wanted to show you if you are for more classical stuff. Just think of D and I and so on. So what we will do is just creating something like this. And if you want to have a at least some geometry in front of your door, use UP again and this could just look like a knob I will use like the direct way to um, give size for that like 12 by 8 or so or maybe 16 by 12 and then I can kind of um, move it where I think it should be located and yeah, maybe use this, like um, extruding this to another cube thing or so. But um, yeah, maybe maybe we do it a little differently. Like I move it outwards. Um, let me see, ten centimeters, and I cut through there using K for knife, a loop, and. Now, I, I don't um, need to do this precisely, I think, because it's just like a placeholder geometry and extrude this like that with caps. And I take the back polygon here. I hold down Control to deselect the bigger one. And now I extrude again by let's say five centimeters so I take the whole object and this time I want my axis right here so again I would use the axis command and then I go axis center so there are two functions like there's tools excuse me command axis center center axis 2 that puts it right in the middle but what I want is a more sophisticated way of positioning the axis center, namely by um, axis to um, oh it doesn't go live so um, auto update there we go um, so 
I can place it right here using minus x minus z and uh, minus y and plus z. So when I execute this and close it, it sits right where I want it. And this gives me great control over placing it right where I need it. So if you're afraid this is too dirty, then just select this very polygon, check its coordinates like x424.5, I copy this and I use get like the this other piece here and paste this inside. So this sits perfectly on the other polygon. Okay, but that was kind of just uh, a freestyle thing. If you think it's too rough, then we could go on, like, selecting all edges apart from this one. With control, I can deselect stuff. And now, again, um, we should set back the orientation to object. And if you have a hard time deselecting stuff, then you can you, um, decrease the radius here. It works like typing in there like two, then you have like a, just a small needle for deselecting. Or you can also hold down the left mouse button and scroll up and down to make it bigger or smaller. I have to do it for the bottom part. I can press S to see anything I have selected and then delete this stuff. So now when I go MS with only the outer edges selected, I can make this look a bit more interesting. Okay. If I wanted to prepare the other parts of this model, I can just like click on the floor pieces because they belong to the other floor so I just take them out press up delete and um, select the the old object and call it floor and this should be a part of this floor, I can just put it underneath so it gets the same texture, no one will probably notice. Technically it would have been better to keep the floor like divided and then I can kind of fuse those polygons together. If I wanted to do this, I still have a copy of my floor. I copy paste it, it gets pasted up there. Um, so let's delete the floor I had changed and use the new original floor. This is my floor piece and I still keep the original here. So floor and floor piece are supposed to be one object. Like you can see, this guy is only that bit and that's the big floor ending there, but I want them to be connected. So I just select both of them, right click and go connect objects and delete. So what this does is it's just keeping one object and putting all the polygons together in it. So now anything is solved and I could still um, like um, put them all into one object using uh, selecting all of them and pressing UZ. So then I get kind of this thing here which is okay, it's still one object or I can go back and By the way, um, 
if you ever want to create an outdoor scene like maybe this is um, not inside an office but in front of it then you could um, just use such a grid to create a pavement maybe you just watch and um, you don't have to do it for the office model but it works like this I have no subdivision and I only create a tiny gap here I go UI for deselecting the opposite command A for getting all of them and now before I extrude them to get proper uh, kind of um, um, proper objects on the um, floor I can use ML again to make them go a little crazy with the tool activated just stroke over both and now I could like mess them up a bit uh, mainly in this direction so they are not really you can see they're not really uh, lying um, straight like I can have a tiny variation here and then I go to extrude stuff with caps activated I can make them two centimeters thick go to all edges and use MS again and that way I have a pavement let's have a look and this is what it looks like so you can see I overdid it with the gaps but like the total impression is more interesting than just the regular grid So again, how did I do it? I just put it like this time with tiny gaps using extrude inner. Then I go invert it, delete uh, those parts, the uh, gaps. Then I go command A, extrude it, maybe 2.5, select all the edges. Oh, excuse me, I when I have all the polygons selected I go ML and apply some variation in height then I extrude it then I select all the edges and go MS for beveling bevel it slightly by maybe 0.2 and I really don't like this highlighting at all because I cannot see my work but now I can so this is a way of doing like stuff for your garden also keep in mind that you are creating um, a lot of geometry with those kind of mass functions but it's a neat trick anyways okay sorry for getting off topic and we're going on with the ceiling The ceiling so far consists of just the regular grid. I typed ng to get in wireframe mode. I use na for just seeing it like that and nb for a combination of both. So how can I turn this really really boring polygon up there 
to something which looks quite lively um, like this here. Um, you can guess it's done with extruding inwards, extruding outwards, cutting it up with ML, ML like this. Those tricks here for the ventilation is pretty much the same with it with the shading, with the window shades. It's just um, split up and then move the edges on the bottom. So the ceiling can basically be created by selecting all the polygons and extruding inwards. Two centimeters will do. And this time we should not delete the little gaps. Instead we should just separate the gaps from the fields by using UP delete. So that way we have ceiling fields and ceiling gaps. So the gaps selected look like this and we should extrude them downwards slightly. Looks like this then. And just an advice, um, architectural modeling is all about um, like having the right measurements. So you really should check a lot whether the measures you use are realistic. So sometimes it's just a millimeter or maybe two millimeters and it looks believable. And sometimes it's maybe a little bit more than two millimeters and it doesn't look believable anymore. So you really should check your work for that. Another thing we can do is optimizing our geometry before extruding. Because if you look at this, um, I have a hard time now to bevel my structure because it's just beveling all of it, which is um, not really what I want. Although it looks interesting, I have to say. It is not what's actually going on up there. So we should go back to the state where it used to be all flat and just press UZ here. So we have a simplified version. And then when I select this simplified structure, I go UR for giving it the right orientation. Um, maybe it worked, maybe it didn't. I will see when I extrude it using D and now I extrude it without creating caps. And here I use a value of 0.1. Keep in mind that the direction was wrong, so I have to UR and D it again. And this time when I, excuse me, when I extruded, it should be the right direction. But to be honest, it's not too important. Um, I can still switch them. It's like maybe two millimeters. And now I turn them around. U R is supposed to reverse them. Not quite sure why it's still blue, but let's ignore that for now and try 
to select all the edges and go MS. And okay, here uh, I created a problem because the beveling doesn't work on this kind of structure. In order to analyze what's going on, I remove nearby geometry and render over this, which this looks okay. And the beveling, let's try it again, of course, with a value which is lower than the actual geometry thickness. 0.5, no subdivisions. Point oh five chamfer four point five, and it's kind of not looking the way I expected it. MS in here leads to something bad. So let's um, just go UE to make this structure consist of quads again. UE was it. And then with MS I can try again. And this time it works. So now you see some um, shading uh, running across from light to dark over a flat surface. And this is because those um, bevels here are really small and the fields or the polygons next to it are really big. And to work against that, we can reduce the phone angle to say 20 degrees and that way maybe less um, that way our gaps will look fine let's see and I still have those edges So below 17 looks okay. Maybe I should have done the beveling a bit different. Uh, let's save some geometry and do it with just no subdivision and with a really low Fong angle. But you will see that it still makes a different difference when you have like a tiny shiny edge running along. Now let's see the fields again and it's always um, good to have something going on between the geometry and um, the actual, how to say, um, the actual fields. but like a gap like this um, will make it possible to look outside of our uh, building and we should cover that up too. So either we model it proper or we put the fields down again or I have to rethink my beveling but um, so far I think uh, we're it's, it's the most easiest thing um, to just lift it up slightly, the um, gaps by 0.2 is too much, but maybe um, 0.2 or 5.
will close it again. But in some cases, gaps are good, but let's leave it like this. So next I have the fields. And you should always make sure that um, your ceiling looks interesting. Sometimes it's not that easy. And we should think of a structure, like where there is uh, ventilation going on and what's what's the pattern. So here I have like each fourth piece, like there are always three in between and I have to make sure I don't collide with those um, kind of uh, pillars. So I should even make the pillars first before I uh, create a pattern. So the floor is still uh, good for that. And let's see it from top. Like I disable the fields and the gaps. And um, the structures or the pillars should have something to do with with our room. I think like they should be orientated towards like towards the windows or have at least some kind of relation here. And yeah, let's just extrude it by the room height, which maybe was 240. Let's look from the side. Here they are, so it's 240 is okay. And we don't need the top bits. And we should isolate the pillars with UL for loop selection and hit UP delete. And in lacking of another word, I just call them pillars. Please note that we damaged the floor now. So um, if you want to be super clean, then you should have copied the floor before. But that way I can show you how to close gaps. So just go MD for closing and you get like this. If you go close to the edge and just click left, then they are closed. Of course, they have, uh, haven't gained that structure, so let's try this option here. So I go back, hit quadrangle, and as expected, it's uh, messing it up. So you could either help a little by doing some work for it. Going MF again. And then you try MD. But it's doing it the way it wants. So we could um, also just go MD and use Ngons and then select the whole thing and go UE or we could just use the knife and cut the long way and then try UE or go MF and there you go but this is um, something you should avoid. This is like um, kind of fiddling with your geometry because you messed up stuff is often a result of not thinking about stuff or being unconcentrated or of having a bad workflow. Well, back to the 
ceiling. Um, and also maybe those pillars are a bit bold. I only used one field here and in my recent model I did two. So what can we do about that? Uh, some more fiddling. Um, maybe we move it back a little. And I use move like E, move it, hold down shift and now I collapse. See that guy? Those edges collapse now and because this is really dirty I should select anything and go UO to make sure those double edges and double points get removed. Okay. Of course um, the pillars are not really sitting uh, on the middle of the grid and um, in order to have a clear pattern up there I will keep it that way. So now let's select some pattern. Okay, the ceiling uh, pattern should not collide with um, the kind of pillars underneath. So our pillars are located a bit hard to see really. Uh, like here. And where else? And here. So we can put our patterns anywhere but here and in the picture before I had to put them close to here and um, this worked quite well but to be honest this picture here was like better prepared obviously than the tutorial I'm just doing so uh, let's just see how this pattern can be resolved like we could start here and there and there just to make sure we can uh, delete those guys so we see better doesn't do much harm so um, let's just click a pattern so it's three in between each field and yeah we can use that I just go up and delete so these are our lines just for an example and the other guys are located like two off and one in front two off one in front if I'm right it was like this and here and there up delete and this is the air condition so let's just go inside the room and see what we're doing it's basically the fields they are if I render this out they can stay the way they are they only need textures someday and the lamps are the next thing we're gonna work on and we should build them up out of um, two things a um, kind of grid 
and like a box where um, there's space for for some bulbs so I think I even um, did some others running across there so let's start we watch it from from top and you know what happens next is going mf again and let's go back because we should copy the lamps before beforehand and just use those guys go mf maybe like that ui for changing ms for going in there offsetting it slightly and ending extend nope all these tools were kind of modified in the recent version so um, or maybe I'm wrong we cannot keep this bit here using that technique so um, let's see how we can do it oh yeah we could that's maybe the right thing to do anyway is to uh, extrude them inwards just a tiny bit 0.5 centimeters and um, extruding them upwards like so and um, not quite sure maybe those lamps were kind of uh, like um, like this um, you know like not straight but like so if we wanted to or um, yeah there's lots of things we could change about that and if you just want to have the same thing going on again we could be really cheeky and um, just use a copy of that and turn it around but that wouldn't work on the other parts or we can be a little less cheeky and um, just make another copy of the lamps and redo some parts but this time the other way around UI MF with the same value selecting all polygons going inwards again all the values are still there and um, extrude them same value and then we just put them up very very slightly like maybe four millimeters now that's maybe one a whole centimeter and that way we can create something which should look okay this could be a lamp somehow and um, you know about that problem like those inner edges should be removed and at the same time uh, here too so let's try to correct both at the same time selecting them looking looking at them from the side 
go into polygon mode, rectangular selection, only select visible elements, deactivate it and just the bottom ones. And now we go UZ and then we go UE. That's a way of saving polygons. So select them all and go UR. And if UR doesn't work, then we can try UA. And now they are all facing in the same direction, but the wrong one. So UR. There we go. So you can keep in mind U. R is um, reversing the normals in whatever the direction they show and UA is an autom automated way of aligning normals which works good for us. Yeah. Beveling is too much work for me now. And we should make sure we have some room up there for um, our lamps later on. So maybe we delete the top bits and um, make a separate kind of uh, box over it. And as far as I know, it only is of interest for those guys here. And the box can be created out of the third copy, or the second copy, rather. And this should cover the whole geometry just fine. We don't need a cap here, so it remains open and we have enough space for the lamps and to be honest you're not gonna see what's going on in there so you should always um, consider where your camera is located and if you really need that much detail like somewhere no one cares so for um, what I like this is um, sufficient yeah it's, it's just okay like that and it gets a little bit, bit more complicated with the other parts, like these are the lamps only. We can um, put them together into one. And the air condition is of course a bit more tricky. Let's have a look at the polygons there. Um, Air condition is, um, hope I didn't delete it. That'd be funny now. Like, um, we have those fields. And where is my air condition? So, um, it claims to have 60 objects in total. And it says it has one, three, two polygons, but and eight polygons for the air conditioning. Here they are. Seems I kind of overlooked them, but these are the guys. And now, how can you create a structure uh, like that? Uh, basically, it's a pyramid which is cut in several ways. So we just need to extrude it, move it upwards, and then we go on. Let us see how we can do that. Um, we could, for example, do it like this. And then we move it up. Like maybe, maybe like this, and um, 
Then what we need is horizontal cuts. So we would just try to select those edges. Maybe we can do that again. So I go inwards. And I move them six centimeters upwards and now I would like to automatically select those edges here so what I can try is convert the recent selection here from polygons to edges by holding down shift and now I have those very edges here and in order to get these edges next to them I can go UY and now I have them selected but I didn't want to have uh, the original selection I don't want to keep it so I go back and there's one trick maybe you need it someday is to create a selection tag you go to select set selection And now whenever I lost that selection up there, so for example because I selected something else, then I can double click that selection and I get them all back for every object. So now I um, go U, Y to expand the selection. And now I want to deselect the original, so I go and say deselect edges. Next I can use MF for doing my horizontal cuts. That looks okay. And now all I need to do is going UI to get the other ones again. And maybe I don't want to bevel the bottom one and maybe not the top one. Well, for the top one, I could do this again, like um, deselect edges. But the bottom one remains, so I just need to deselect it from the side. Maybe from here, I can hit S to zoom there, and using my rectangle tool holding down Control, I should be able to get rid of it. Now, let's use MS again and bevel them so they are apart from each other and go to polygon mode hitting UI for inverting and now I delete them. And now in order to get the structure I have in mind I should um, only select like um, select any other ring here so like um, the this one and this one this one this one in this case I could go UI UI but I get too many edges and I don't get the edges of the other guys so I again have to look at it from the side And maybe it's easier to do this in two rows. Like um, I need the bottom ones. Or no, rather the yeah. Let's let's try this, but not the bottom ones. And. Um, And now we can just um, pull them down, like so. And then I select all the polygons and hit extrude. The other direction will be better. I create caps. 
This doesn't change anything in this case. And if I wanted to, I could, again, level them very slightly. But I wouldn't do that. Well, you're not going to see it from far away anyways. Sorry. Um, or we can try. I mean, if you want to keep it like that, then we should reduce the funk tag. So it looks proper, like this. And if you want additional detail, then we can go inside the aircon and go ms, apply this, render this out, and don't like it, so 005, it's really minimal. And there we go. Well, probably not necessary. Okay, that's the way how we do the ceiling. So we're basically done with our office. I go to the top and um, place a camera with perspective view straight to the horizon with a wide lens even wider put it right in the corner turn the camera a bit and make sure it's on eye height and go inside that camera by clicking this little cross here and it appears my room is a bit, well, not, not really high. But this is basically how you create an office interior. So now, if you are disappointed in comparison to that picture here, then, well, we're still missing the furniture, which is again just a matter, if you look at it, of extrusions, like a polygon extruded here and a polygon ex extruded inwards. Here the screen is just a flying um, polygon which has some extrusions and all the rest, believe me, is just done the same way. Even the keyboards are just grids that have extruded keys. And the pieces of paper are more interesting. So we might have a look inside that original um, document. It looks like this. It's uh, a lot of copy-paste going on there. And um, even those sheets of paper are just um, a polygon, basically split up and cut through. So it has some, yeah, some specialties or these edges are slightly moved backwards, so it looks like folded paper here. If you look closely, you can see some shades running across there. And um, yeah, and the rest is lighting, of course. Um, if you have like the document we just created here, then um, the glass should be transparent or even easier, not existent. And then you could just use your physical sky for a start and use a 
I don't know, maybe uh, early morning. <laughs> so the light is coming through the ceiling. So um, we should put a polygon on top, which has just the size of our building. And we can use the original for this. Activating it. And if you look at it from the side, then um, this will be enough to block the light. And we should choose a very, very low angle for the sun so it goes inside our room. Something like that looks attractive and the rest is something you can do with global illumination if you um, want to. You could do it like um, just going to the render settings, effect global illumination and um, choose a default interior, preview, high diffuse depth I reduce it to 5 and the rest should be kept rather low. So let's have a look. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. I hope you learned something.